All right. Well, what is up, everybody? This is Keith Jameson. I go by Get a Guy 231 across the DFS industry. And if you watched my Euro preview for Saturday, I said that I was not going to be doing a showdown preview. And then the night before the showdown hit, I realized just how big the contest was. I'm like, there's no chance I'm not doing a video. So welcome to the preview for tomorrow's Italy versus Turkey Euro. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just going to say it. I've seen, obviously it's 2021. So I've seen Euro 2021. I've seen logos for it. All the hashtags are Euro 2020. So who the heck knows? I think they were actually calling this Euro 2020 in 2021, which just feels exactly like how it should be for how the last like year and a half has gone that we're just going to call a tournament like the year before. But regardless, whether it's Euro 2020 or Euro 2021, we are back. We've got some amazing soccer action and it's a great start. Uh, you know, Turkey is a very talented team. And then Italy is kind of a tournament favorite. Like they're, they're up there in the betting odds going form wise. They should absolutely be a favorite, you know, going name recognition wise, they should be favored as well. So it should be really interesting to see how they open up. We're going to talk about kind of more optimal constructions. I'll give you some uh, GPP thoughts. I, I, I really do think if you've been watching these videos for a while, like you're going to already know what I'm going to say GPP wise, it's going to be about game scripting, right? you know, pick a score line and then pick how it's going to go. But, you know, let's, uh, I'll, I'll give a little bit more detailed thoughts. Uh, hopefully they'll help. But just a quick reminder before I get into picks, could really use you guys to like, subscribe and comment. It all really, really helps. And I guess the last plug is if you didn't see it and you only were researching, you only found this video because it's the showdown for Turkey and Italy. I do encourage you to watch the preview for Saturday's classic slate. Uh, I think it was a pretty good one. Ricardo Rodriguez, I've been corrected. I knew like as I was taping it that it wasn't Roberto Rodriguez. And I think I, at some point I paused and like, I know this is wrong, but I just don't even want to go look it up. So Ricardo Rodriguez, sorry to our Swiss wingback set taking, hopefully PK taking fullback, but uh, should be a fun site. All right, let's jump into it. I'm going to be on SofaScore for majority of this because I really don't think that pricing is actually all that tough on DraftKings where you can't fit what you want. So let's just talk about how it's going to go. Um, really cool that Sofa score, you know, you have your odds right here. So we have minus 200 um, for Italy. And what really is a home game, let me just make sure of where it's being played. Uh, see, I, I go here. I thought that I had it pulled up. <laughs> All right, give me a second. Here we go. Uh, yeah, it's in Rome. So it is a home game essentially for Italy. Um, but minus 200 favorites. Um, let's see if it has the total here. There you go. So the total is hovering in that two and a half range, a little bit of juice in the under. So it's really about, you know, two. So again, not a huge scoring, like most of these games, you know, these, these are talented teams, but these teams haven't been together a ton. You know, they've been playing with their, with their clubs. So there's not a lot of cohesiveness. So there's not gonna be a ton of goals. So let's just start out with the two guys that I think are just locking your lines from an optimal build. And a lot of your GPP goals is uh, Berarde and Insigne. Now they are going to be splitting sets. Both are incredibly active players, not only with crossing, but a lot of shots and shot creation. They're going to be out on the wing. With Italy's style in this 4-3-3, depending on how long it takes for them to score or if they do score, really depends a lot on what these fullbacks do. I've seen plenty of Italy games where these fullbacks do not overlap much at all. Um, in some games where they really are pressing and they're controlling a ton of the possession, that Florenzi and Spinazzola, or if it's Barar guy, I don't even know if he's with them. He, I don't think he is. Or Emerson, whoever's on the left, they, they get really, really active and really involved. So it should be interesting. Um, Locatelli and Barella are very, very attacking minded, like really just really talented. Barella more attacking minded than Locatelli, but very, very talented midfielders that really don't make it where Florenzi or Spinazzola do have to overlap a ton. Um, you know, the width is going to be provide, provided by Berarda and Insigne. Both of those guys love cutting in for shots or the cross. Um, so that's kind of Italy's style and Italy's players. You know, the big part of this slate is going to be, you know, much like the classic slate, it's going to be dominated by, are you going to play Romelu Lukaku? I think this slate's going to be dom dominated by, after these two, are you going to play Ciro Immobile? Ciro Immobile, phenomenal striker, right? Um, has been potentially, I, I don't think it's, way out, let's just say, but he's been the best striker in Serie A for the last two or three seasons um, for Lazio. But that form at Lazio has not carried with the national team. He's in a couple of big spots, missed big chances. So, you know, this is a chance at home 
um, you know, for him to come through. But again, it's a low total. So do we really want to spend how much is it? It's 9,800 on Chero Immobile and give up, you know, a Serie A legend himself, Haikin Kalanalu, I think it's the right way to say it. I don't know if the G is silent or not. I, this Euro is going to be like something special for me. Like it's going to be a world of mispronunciations. I need like to get Gavin Jules on here to like fix all of my pronunciations. But you know who I'm talking about. The number 10. He's going to take at least half the sets for Turkey. Um, he could very well take a monopoly. I, I, there's samples all over the place. Likely, I, I would say I'd be like circling Kalanaglu as definitely taking some sets with Yaziki has been a decent chance to take um, some corners as well. But this Turkey side is quite loaded. You've got Burak Yomez, who in the latter stages of Ligue 1 won it for Lille. You've got Yaziki was on the Lille team. He got COVID at the end of the season, so he wasn't playing as big of a role, but a good player. You have Selic, who's a very, very highly thought of a fullback. You've got Soyanchu from Leicester. Um, Yoklusu, I think, has uh, finished the season at West Brom. He's a decent player. You have Demiral, plays for Juventus. Kieran has been a decent player. I don't remember if I know where he is offhand. Yeah, Fortuna. So that's – where is that? Is that in Turkey? I think it's in Turkey. I'm not going to – of second Bundesliga. I've seen him play, though. He's a decent player. So you, my, my point is up and down Turkey sign up. You have some good players. This isn't, you know, North Macedonia that we're talking about here. So despite being plus 700, I do think Turkey has a chance to at least contain Italy or make it tough. So let's kind of go now that I talked about everybody. Oh, I, I think the one thing I just want to bring up, Jorginho is your ultimate like GPP play. Um, or maybe he's not like the ultimate GPP play. He does okay for Italy, but he is on PKs. Um you know, that's, that's one Jorginho's specialty. So, you know, there is some equity there. We are going to have VAR. We know how much VAR and PKs dominated the World Cup. So will that carry over to Euros? And then, you know, I guess one other thing I just want to bring up is Donnarumma. If you don't think Turkey's going to score, or you think they're going to struggle scoring, and, you know, you look at Italy's games, okay, they are the, one of the best defensive teams in the world. Like, look at all these zeros, 4 0 Not all of those are created equally, right? Lithuania, Bulgaria, Northern Ireland, Turkey's better than all these teams. Poland, maybe not so much. Um, Czech Republic, they created, went to Euros. But, you know, you go back, 1-1 one one versus Netherlands, 0-0, zero, 6-0, zero, zero, one, zero, one, one. You get the point. Italy is a stout defensive squad. It's not going to be easy on Turkey. And Donnarumma is one of the best goalkeepers in the world. At 7,000, I think he's going to be really, really owned. That's going to kind of go into Jim's GPP strategy. So, all right, let's just finish up cash, then I'll just talk about GPPs a little bit. So, you know, I think one of these two is you're like the captain. Um, you know, so I like it. Insigne gets, gives you a little bit of a discount. You do something like Insigne at captain. Now, if you do want a mobile, this is why I don't know if it's the smartest thing. You play a mobile. Now, let's say that you go down to, I think, uh, Shellek will be fairly popular. 4,200 for a fullback is a very, very good, good deal. You go here, you have 4,800 left. You're not going to be able to play one of these um, Italian fullbacks. So we tried to do Florenzi, and it's going to leave us a center back, right? Bonucci's a fine. So that, I, you know, hell, I, I just ran into a lineup. I bet you a lot of people are going to play. But, um, you know, you could have Emerson's too much. Spinazzola's way too much, right? You're not going to play Spinazzola there. And realistically, you know, and maybe this is a good GPP leverage, right? Who's going to play Spinazzola for 6,800 when Florenzi 5,600? I mean, I'm not in an optimal build. So for GPP, that makes a ton of sense. If you, you know, in GPP, especially in a tournament this big, if you see guys like, if you projected Florenzi and Spinazzola, you probably say like five to seven for each of them. Okay. Well, that doesn't make up $1,200 difference. So almost everybody's going to play Florenzi. Well, in that case, if you're playing GPP and you want to differentiate, play Spinozola. Spinozola gets the assist, not Forenzi. Boom. You know, you have a five to six point difference and you're off and running. Um, but you do this. You know, I just showed you that could work. Um, I think Locatelli is a nice play at 5,200. I would love Verratti at 4,800. Um, Chiellini is a little expensive at 48. Um, where is the other fullback for... Turkey, I'm already blanking on his name. Maris, he's a decent player. Um, let me just type it in. 
but he's 5,000. You know, you could play a combination of him and I guess I don't even like that. See, I just don't like the salary that Immobile gives you. Like, I like it a lot. I like these builds a lot more if I'm playing like Talon Alu here. Now you say 5,300. Now I can do some form of, maybe I can even change up my captain, fit Florenzi Locatelli or, you know, even at this point with 70 with that much left, if I liked Anorama, 3,600, I have this ability to do so. So there's just some interesting builds there. And by no means you have to play Selich. You know, you he, you know, if, if Italy dominates the ball, like I think they are, I, I do think we're going to see Turkey mostly playing on the counter um, with Italy being pretty dominant in possession. So, you know, you don't even have to play Celic. You might not be able to get forward too much. You know, you can play, you know, Soyuncu, 3,200. You can play Demiro, 3,400. Um, Yoklusu, 3,800. So there's some options down here that you could punt it off and even get a little bit extra salary. Or not even by Kalanalu. You know, if he's splitting with the Aziki, Aziki is a super talented player, 7,200. And now you have a set-taking Turkey player. But, you know, I could really very much see most people are going to be like five Italy players to like one Turkish player or four Italy players to two Turkish players. I don't think you're going to see a lot of 3-3 builds in cash. So that's kind of the cash buildup. Um, hope that helps. Let's just talk a little bit about GPP. And I'm not even going to really be on the salary. I'm going to go over here to Sofa. So first off, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't say what happened in the Champions League final. Shout out to my partner at FSI, Tendril Storm, for winning, what was it, like 21,000 with, in my opinion, just an incredibly straightforward Chelsea stack. You know, he went ahead and he scripted that Chelsea was going to win one nothing, not Man City like most of us thought. So he played Kai Havara as the captain, which, again, I had a lot of Timo Werner captain. I know that's – you're like, okay, I got to turn this off right now. That guy played with a lot of Timo Werner captain Champions League final? No. But th that's how I did it. So I, I was only a little bit off. I had, like, Werner captain with uh, the Chelsea stack with Mindy. Didn't quite get there like Kai Havara did. But he had Kai there. He had the Chelsea wingbacks. He had Mindy. He had Mason Mount, and I think uh, it was like Phil Foden or Riyad Mahrez. Like, it makes a ton of sense. Well, we should just kind of take learning from that, right? If you just immediately want to go, everybody's going to stack Italy as minus 200 favorites at home. Well, the easy thing to do is play what one nothing Turkey would be, right? So you could play Yomaz to score the goal. You know, Yomaz becomes your Kai. You got Kalan Aglu as a set taker. You take Zelich or Maris. I, 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 what I would say here is just because it is plus 700 and Turkey is much worse than Chelsea is, you probably still want a couple Italian pieces, but you could do a build. Like, let's just see what this looks like. I'm just curious. Yomaz is expensive, so not many people are going to do that. You have Kalinaglu. Let's just say it's Shellek. Let's find their goalkeeper. I don't even know who their goalie is. Is that... Yeah, I don't even know. I don't know this guy. He plays in the Turkish League. But it is Kakir. Probably butchered his name. So what? 4,600. Now, look, I still have the salary to play my two guys there. I just have to switch up the captain here real quick, right? Or maybe I don't do that. Maybe I don't. I would like to really like Bert Bart High. Um, You know, maybe I just go down to Zell, like do something like a center back. I'm not going to fill that in because I don't give a full lineup. But, like, there's a turkey stack. That's not going to be played. That's not going to be popular. And again, there was no thinking in this. I didn't make this lineup by any form. I just predicted a score, right? I said, if Turkey wins one nothing, what does that look like? Okay, so now do the same thing for Italy. All right, it's one nothing. Who scores a goal? Let's say it's Chiro Mobley. Great, there's your captain. It's one to zero. That means Donnarumma is going to be one of the top scorers on the slate because he's going to get five points for the win, five points for the clean sheet. You go there. You know, you play Insigne is, you know, in my opinion, Italy's best player. Maybe you get a broad eye and you just play one the other way. Like those are the two easiest safe stacks to do. One nothing on each side with the goalie. Now, because so many people know that, you know, maybe the next level thinking is, all right, let me look at what some one ones could be, right? If it's one to one, you probably don't want any goalie there. I do think goalie and especially Donnarumma is going to be pretty popular. So maybe just the idea is, all right, I got one one. I just got to find the two goals, find the peripherals or find the assists and put it together. And I, I don't mean to like make GPP strategy seem somewhat simple, but realistically, you should just be like charting it down that here's my one zeros, right? So I'm going to want it. Like if I'm making a ton of lineups, one zero Italy's, I need to rotate the captain. So I need an Asenia captain, I need a Berardi captain, I need a Chiro 
captain. Maybe I need a Donnarama captain, right? Because if he gets like five saves plus a clean sheet win, that's 20 DK. That's almost two goals. So you just got to kind of go down, up and down the list, fill those in, and then you got to make some contrarian stacks with turkey captains and, you know, maybe some contrarian stack uh, lineups also are like one ones. So I hope that helps. Looking forward to this late. I uh, hope you all are too. And if you do want extra help, you want to be in the chat with, uh, you know, myself, with Storm, with all of the FSI members, um, we really do encourage you to join up. Um, there are packages for as low as $4 a day, um, which will especially be great on Saturday, where we cover not only all the classics on DraftKings and FanDuel, but the showdowns as well. So hope to see you guys there. Thank you all so much for watching. Again, if you're still around, like, comment, subscribe. It all really does help. With that, I'll say see you.